Um, before that, uh, Susanne von Falkenhausen, who I think for several decades brought feminism and art history into touch at the Humboldt University. Mm -hmm. there. And um, yeah, maybe yeah. you can address I some of the questions you. that I, I know no, you I don't took issue I with. No, I don't think I will, because this has been a very vast statement and very impressive. So I don't know where I come in because I'm sitting on a fence in a way. <laughs> so uh, it's not much I can add except that uh, I really like, uh, well, perhaps we could do it like this because I've written down some reactions on the presentation, self representation of uh, uh, plans of our revolution. And I was really fairly pissed when I read this text. So my, my, my reaction was very pissed. So now I'm very relieved that <laughs> your, your practical and theoretical approaches uh, somehow give answers to my being pissed. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm in a difficult position now because I'm kind of a voice of skepticism which has been partly uh, removed by your statement, so what am I going to do? <laughs> so anyway, um, when I read this text uh, with which hands of our revolutionists presenting themselves in the internet, I thought it was extremely defensive. It was only, uh, and I was thinking about it as being only directed against right-wing authoritarian crises. Um, and I thought, we will not go quietly, for example, is very defensive and very larmoyant. So, well, you, you kill us, but we will, be, you, we will yell before we go. So, <laughs> no, uh, that's a no-go. And I also think it sounds preposterous. And I have to add that this preposterousness of what art is capable of doing in society has been kind of uh, burdened me since my visit to Athens, where we went at the same time and talked about this. So we can turn back on, on the problems with this too. Um, as artists, quote, as artists, it is our job and our duty to reimagine and reinvent social relations threatened by right wing populist rule. That's very <laughs> Where does the knowledge come from, I asked, from that only the artists are the keepers of the social knowledge? I think that is a little bit preposterous. The reservoirs of communitary self administration and invention are much deeper, historically longer, and very diverse. And then this, this way of saying the new movement, the artist, will shine a light on the rise of right-wing populism. Sounds like they're the only one to be in the know. And that's just not true. The whole world is kind of acting up. So I thought this sounds a little bit like an artist's manifesto of old tradition, a little big mouth and not bothered about real, actual realization of its aims. And so I really liked what uh, Adam has been writing about uh, his meetings with the students after Trump election. Um, they aim, their aim is to create a forum where everyone can register their fear, anger and desire for change. Uh, and which they call a forum for resistance. Well, resistance is one of those key words feeding into Athens documenta. And I'm asking myself, if this is a valuable word for political activism. I'm, I'm not sure, I have to think about it. So, um, is giving voice to fear and anger already an act of resistance? I don't think so. Um, now to the topic of complicity. Any doubts that the art world is part of the production of capital? This is the way I read this question because I'm such an old person. <laughs> and I've been growing up with these fights of artists against producing art as a commodity. And they've been doing all kinds of stuff. They've been kind of uh, putting uh, dog calms into vitrines and whatever else, and <laughs> inventing performances to do things that cannot be sold. But it didn't serve their purpose at the end. So, are there any doubts about how often and how long artists have dreamt themselves into a world without this complicity? And we already heard already some concrete thoughts about how this can't be uh, 
eliminated this complicity, but how we could perhaps work with it. Um, more interesting, I found the question, uh, what in fact does complicity mean? Conscious, intentional, passive, etc. This question, I think, should be part of artists' training. Getting a realistic idea how the market works and how they can posit themselves within a certain consciousness within it. One who does it brilliantly, even if I have doubts about the artistic results, is Hans Hacke. And he's done this analysis very early on. Um, Romanticism, idealism, dreams of the eccentric or revolutionary role of the artist, very old topic, are counterproductive to the precision of artistic strategies in dealing with these conditions. And the last question left me a little bit flabbergasted, and you kind of cued it down on very concrete examples, and I thought about it. it, it there has to be a theoretical answer, but there can't be. How can artists and art institutions provide the conditions for political liberation, economic security, and greater equality of opportunity? This sounds like, uh, yeah, class struggle. <laughs> Marx may be a man of a distant class, but his analysis gives at least the instruments to say very clearly that on a universal level, that surely will never be the case. So I'm very glad that we talk about concrete projects. <laughs> so, um, I wonder, because I'm the f it's the first time I'm, I'm uh, here, what is Hands of Our Re Revolution really asking? In which fields does it want to be active? Does it, um, um, does it want to do theory? Does it want to prepare concrete uh, projects which is already being done, in, not only in artists' uh, projects, but in projects all over the place and on local grassroots levels, working with refugees uh, and, and the like. So I'm a little bit, uh, I'd like to really know what you are about to develop. If you know already, I guess it's still in the making. Uh, I have my doubts on doing uh, two generalized things on doing two generalized theoretization, which is mostly bad theory. I have been growing up with the failure of globalized theoretization and a retreat, and we just talked about this, I thought we did, <laughs> outside the door. We, we retreated in the 70s and 80s into something which then was called issue movements. And the issue movements were there to avoid that people look for personal power and uh, careers in institutions coming out of movements that then perpetuate themselves and become parties and whatever. So institutionalizing, one other word, when my old anarchic tendency go, Ooh, attention, please. Mm. So issue movements kind of disappear when the issues disappear. If they don't disappear the issues, then the issue movements go on. The Greens are now at that point. You don't know what's going to happen. But they developed a new party. Um, uh, I think so many things uh, have come up in these uh, 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 statements uh, that I would be very interested in, in uh, knowing more about. I was very astonished that you named David Reed, because this is formalism at its <laughs> best, worst, whatever. It's just so formalist. And uh, the way you, 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 you kind of put this in and made it like an allegory of uh, exchange was really an interesting move, I thought. Yeah. So I think that's our last word. <laughs> There's a question here that, that I sort of heard wonder along, which is about complicity in, in a very particular sense of, let's say, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but that we say, okay, uh, notion one is, there's no way to be uncomplicit. You're always already complicit in some way. You have to find out in which particular way. 
Is it because of your book class background? Because of your upbringing? Is it because the way you've been networked into certain fields? Etc. Etc. Let's say you are complicit and you have to find out how. And how do you make that something that is not something you necessarily only deal with by purging it, whatever that might mean, but by making it something productive? Like you mentioned one example, Hans Hacke. Before you can even go and say what's wrong with Guggenheim, you have to accept the show that, that you're going to do with Guggenheim, right? So the other opposite option would have said, no, I can't show it Guggenheim because they're all complicit. They're real estate people who make really bad things, they're racist, etc. Instead, you move into that structure and then criticize it from within, which comes all, with all kinds of other strings attached. So, uh, or to give another example, maybe current one, which I'm looking forward to see, Mark Bradford is, a, is an artist and painter whose work is like, selling like hotcakes in the art market, you know, his big gallery is selling his work, but apparently it puts some of that, and, and quite a substantial amount of that income towards a, a local, very, uh, projects that are very productive and progressive that he doesn't make much word about, that you only hear through hearsay that he's actually doing these projects with kids in Los Angeles, and now he's doing the American Pavilion in, in Venice, and um, I'm looking forward to how that maybe comes out or doesn't. But it's interesting to see like a big market artist not just be sitting on, on, on the laurels. And, and that's another example maybe uh, what being a nail can be in this regard. So this is a question, I don't know where to direct it first, but maybe you can, can respond. I, yeah? Can I maybe make a suggestion which is mechanical? Yes. Because, because I think... Um, I think one of our faults is that, and you pointed it out because you suggested we we change the kind of mechanics of how we address and this, and in fact uh, we had a, about about a, a seventeen hour conversation about the word collective versus coalition when we were drafting uh, the manifesto <laughs> you the test uh, with with, with, with uh, Martha Rosler and. And Hito Shriyan, and we settled upon the notion of coalition. And I recognize most of the people in the room, and I regard, I, I, I want to regard everybody as part of that coalition. And I think this idea of that this authoritarian voice directed outwards is wrong. And I think, I think, perhaps the rest of the period should be. Uh, uh, not replies, but also just, um, you know, I think maybe we should shift places and I think um, anyone with, with, with anything to say, no matter how personal or problematic, should, should, be, uh, should be on, on, on this side of the line. <laughs>